Episode 221, A Tight Slap Ligia raised her head and looked provocatively at Camila. Ligila was very confident in her birthday present, as were her precious son-in-law, Ares. The young master of the floating snow manor had prepared the gifts meticulously. Lakia would certainly surpass everyone and seize first place in one go. She would trample Camilla under her feet. However, to Lakia's disappointment, Camilla didn't seem to notice her provocative gaze at all. Her expression was as calm as usual, making Lakia feel as if she had punched the air and there was nowhere to use her strength. Hmm. Little hussy, just pretending. When I give my congratulatory gift, I'd like to see how you're going to continue pretending. Right at that moment, the servant's clear voice rang out. Fourth Miss sends. Fourth Young Miss gives ten essence gathering pills a mid-intermediate treasure weapon, a spirit rhino divine sword, an intermediate supplementary treasure weapon, a piece of calming heart marble, a hundred bottles of upper-class elixir, and a hundred Numa invigorating pills. I wish the family lord good fortune like the East Sea and a long life. What? Ten essence gathering pills, plus a spirit rhino divine sword, a piece of calming heart marble, a hundred bottles of upper class elixir, and a hundred Numa invigorating pills? It's really a big deal. The floating snow manor is indeed worthy of being the number one sword sect in the Costa area. Its generosity far exceeds her imaginations. It's rich. The Bellina's family is rich this time. In the hall, countless gladiators took a deep breath. Their eyes were filled with envy and jealousy. They wished they could replace the old man. This huge gift was simply too generous. The essence gathering pill was an intermediate high grade treasure pill. One treasure pill was equivalent to ten years of hard work from a low-grade master. Ten essence-gathering pills would be enough to make the training base of several bone-forging master warriors in the Bellinus family soar to the level one realm. As for the spirit rhino divine sword and the calming heart marble, these were rare treasures. This was especially true for the intermediate assisting treasure weapon, the Calming Heart Marble, which was even harder to come by. Its value was comparable to that of some high-grade treasure weapons. Without 5,000 spirit stones, there was no need to think about obtaining a piece of Calming Heart Marble. The most ordinary were the upper-class elixir, and the Numa invigorating pills, but there was a massive amount. A hundred bottles of elixir and a hundred Numa invigorating pills. Combined, they were worth over a thousand spirit stones. Even old Master Primus, who was sitting on the dais, couldn't help but be slightly moved. He looked at Ligia with an increasingly gentle gaze. This gift was enough to allow the Bellinus family's strength to improve by leaps and bounds. At this moment, Ares raised his head. He was filled with indescribable pride. Ligia and the other two women beside him weren't any better. Especially not Ligia. Her face was full of pride, like a proud swan that was about to fly into the sky. The next moment, 
She turned her gaze and looked down at Camilla from above. With a glance, it seemed like she was conveying the gap between them, saying, Even if your family worked hard for your whole life, it wouldn't be enough for my son-in-law to pull out the roots of your hair. However, what made her angry was that Camilla was as calm as usual. She even leisurely picked up a mouthful of vegetables. She was completely ignoring them. You little hussy. Let's see how long you can pretend. She glared fiercely at Camilla. Ligia's soul-sucking eyes rolled around as if she didn't care. Little sister, what kind of congratulatory gift did you prepare for father? Among the nine of us, father dotes on you the most. I believe your congratulatory gift will definitely surpass ours. Ligia's mouth is really vicious. She knows that Camila's family is not good, yet she still says such words. She wants Camila to make a fool of herself. Many people looked at Camila with sympathy and pity in their eyes, as if they had already foreseen Camila's humiliating scene. At the front of the hall. Hmm? Old Master Primus raised his eyebrows and opened his mouth, ready to say something. Although he was unhappy that Camilla didn't listen to his advice and was determined to be with Cepheus, this good for nothing, it was not a joke to have the decades of familial love. He couldn't bear to watch Camilla be humiliated in front of so many people. But at that moment... Camilla stood up and glanced at Ligia indifferently. Of course, this is my congratulatory gift. Naturally, it is not something that you, ordinary people, can compare with. What? Did I hear that wrong? What did Camilla say? Countless guests in all directions were dumbfounded. That energy, those words, those who didn't know would think it was a matriarch of the Mithraea warrior sect who had spoken. I would like to see what kind of good stuff you can bring out. With a cold snort in her heart, Ligia put on a fake smile and said, Little sister, let us... Country bumpkins, see what you call a great gift. She's already a mother. Why are Lakia's words still so immature? Old Master Primus's words stopped before they reached his mouth and instead became a helpless bitter smile. Among the people present, Lakia's congratulatory gift was the most valuable. If it was considered ordinary, what was the value of any other gift? A pile of trash? If these words were not true, they would offend many people. At that moment, the attendant who was singing said loudly, A gift from the fifth miss. Looking at the shocking giftless, the attendant trembled and almost fell to the ground. The fifth miss sends a gift. Gift. Gift what? Hurry up and recite it. Could it be that my little sister's congratulatory gift is too heavy and you're too embarrassed to say it out loud? Ligia's words were extremely harsh. But what good things could a small family like this bring out? This time Camilla will probably lose face. But who is to blame? Who asked her to slap her own face? 
at that moment. Fifth, Fifth Mist is here to give you 100 Miro cleansing pills. The attendant finally managed to suppress the shock in his heart as he uttered these words while trembling. High, high grade treasure pill, tiger energy and blood pill, 10 pills, high grade, high grade treasure weapon, cold ice glass griffin sword, high grade gladiator skill, hurricane divine sword technique, rank three high grade spirit fruit. 10 blackberry fruits. I wish family lord the brilliance of the sun and moon. Eternal youth. What? I... What did I hear? In the huge main hall, the noise instantly vanished, leaving the entire place completely silent. Even the sound of a needle landing on the ground could be clearly heard. If the congratulatory gift that Ligia had gathered with the help of her son-in-law was a rumble that shocked everyone, then Camila's congratulatory gift was an earthquake. It was a destructive blow to everyone, and countless guests were stunned on the spot. Although the marrow cleansing pill was only a supreme great spirit medicine, it was still worth a lot. In the black market, every marrow cleansing pill had been sold at a sky high price of over a hundred spirit stones. And there was often no market price for them because they couldn't be found. A hundred marrow cleansing pills was almost equal to the total amount of pills that the Mithraea warriors sect had allowed to flow into the western three paths for five years. The tiger energy and blood pill was a high-grade treasure pill. Furthermore, among the many high-grade treasure pills, it was the cream of the crop. Each of them was worth over a thousand spirit stones. To an old man like Primus, the effect of the tiger energy and blood pill was even more precious than that of many top quality pills. It was said that it could increase one's longevity to 200 years. But that was only theoretical data. But how many people actually reached the age of a hundred? Most of them only had 70 to 80 years of life, which was equivalent to an ordinary master. For example, old Master Primus, who had reached 80 this year, could only live for 160 years. His energy and blood had begun to decline, as had his physique. Without exception, the bone-forging Fourth Empyrean stage was his limit. However, it was difficult with the tiger energy and blood pill. It was specifically used to replenish energy and blood. It was a high-ranked treasure pill that could help one recover to their peak condition. At that time, it would still be difficult to break through to the level 7 master. But it wouldn't be impossible to break through to level 6. As for a high-ranked, high-grade treasure weapon, it was a treasure that even a high-level master would covet. Many of the level 7 or 8 Empyrean masters didn't even have a high-ranked, high-grade treasure weapon in their hands. It was nearly impossible to find a high-ranked, high-grade treasure weapon like the cold ice glass griffin sword. The Spirit Consonant's Divine Sword was not just a tiny bit inferior. It was on a completely different level. Hurricane Divine Sword Art, a supreme grade gladiator skill, was even more frightening. It was the ultimate skill of clan suppressing. One must know that the Bellinus family was huge. 
This was an ultimate gladiator skill. As for the blackberry fruit, it was a legendary spirit fruit. Every single one of them was worth a fortune. The worth of ten of them was inestimable. Even if they sold all the belongings of the entire Bellinus family, they wouldn't be able to buy these ten blackberry fruits. After a while, there were whispers in the hall. This time, I have truly gained a lot of experience. Such a great gift. It is definitely the first time in my life that I have seen such a thing. Compared to these five great treasures, Ligia's birthday present is really just trash. Just the value of those hundred marrow cleansing pills is already more than that of Ligia's birthday present. Ligia had really lost all her respect this time. A typical slap in the face instead of success. Ah. However, many people had different opinions. Is Camilla really... really able to bring out such a heavy gift? Is the singing attendant playing some sort of prank? They had all heard of Camilla's situation. The Pulcher family of Ostia Antica was a small family that was not considered to be of high rank. Not to mention high-grade treasure weapons, supreme-grade gladiator skills, and the legendary blackberry fruits. No one would have expected that they could give the gift of a marrow-cleansing pill. Episode 222 I am the main character Even if the other guests were doubtful in their hearts, they would at most whisper to each other. However, Ligia had already flown into a rage. Her fair hand was pointed at the singing attendant. Someone... Drag this lowly servant out and punish him with a hundred strokes of the staff. Who gave him the guts to lie about the birthday present? No matter what, Ligia couldn't believe that Camilla, the little hussy, could come up with such a big gift. This little hussy's family. Everyone knew the Pulcher family was just a small and insignificant family from a remote city. There wasn't even a bone-forging master in the entire family. How could they bring out such a great gift? One should know that even those high and mighty high-level masters might not be able to produce one of the five great treasures. It must be that this little tramp bribed the attendant to change the bill. Yes, that must be it. That must be it. Ligia, who was angry from embarrassment, waved her hand and called over the guards of the family. She wanted to severely punish that lowly servant who didn't know the difference between life and death. So it turns out to be a private servant. 
I knew it. How could a lowly small family clan bring out such a heavy gift? The countenance of the ashen-faced young master of the floating snow manure turned slightly better. A hundred marrow cleansing pills. Ten high-grade treasure pills. Tiger energy. And blood pills. A high-grade treasure weapon. Cold ice glass griffin sword. A top-grade gladiator skill. Hurricane divine sword art. Ten legendary blackberry fruits. They were all more expensive than the same amount of gold, even if they were sold to the floating snow manure. In the next moment, the cold shine flashed in Aerie's eyes. How dare you play with me like this? This matter won't just end like this. Ares' strength was not something to mess around with. Family Lord, you should know that I am not lying. I am not lying. The attendant who was performing the ritual shouted, with his weak physique and weak training base. If he were to be hit by a hundred heavy plates, even if he didn't die, he would lose half of his life. This... Old Master Primus opened his mouth, wanting the guard to let the attendant go. Reason told him that a mere attendant absolutely didn't have the courage to casually sing a false congratulatory gift. Who would dare to sing a lie? However, emotionally, he subconsciously believed that all of this was fake. It had to be. Those five great gifts were simply fictitious. Others had only heard rumors, but he had ordered someone to investigate the Pulcher family. The situation in the Pulcher family was very clear. The strongest expert in the family was only a grade eight huge perfection gladiator. Any half-step master elder of the Bellinus family could eliminate the Pulcher family from the great Roman Empire not to mention the precious treasures that can make a high-level master go crazy. Even just the marrow-cleansing pills. How did they get their hands on it? It was a big mystery. However, Primus kept these thoughts to himself. You still don't know how to repent. Drag him down and kill him with your staff. A hint of impatience flashed across Ligia's face. Hmm. Camilla and Amadeus frowned almost at the same time. In front of them, Ligia was slandering the unlucky servant. Not only did they accuse him of faking it, but they even wanted to kill the servant with their staffs. That really went too far. It was unbearable to watch. However, before they could explode in anger, a cold snort filled with endless resentment came from the front of the hall. Fourth miss, you are truly impressive. Are you trying to drag me down and kill me with your staff? The one who spoke was a skinny old man in a green tunic. His face was as cold as ice, and his entire body was emitting a terrifying chill. He looked like a person who shouldn't be approached by strangers. Three... Third Elder, you... You misunderstood. I... I... I didn't say anything about you. Ligia's body trembled, and her voice was nearly incoherent. Her face was filled with panic. She could treat the life of a servant like grass. If anything went wrong, she would have someone kill the servant. However, she didn't dare to act impudently in front of the old man. This was Junius Bellinus, third elder of the Bellinus family. His talent was so high that it even slightly surpassed old Master Primus's. He had an intermediate rank 8 bloodline, and his training base was so high that none of the ten third elders of the Bellinus family could surpass him. 
he was only one step away from breaking through to the Master Fourth Empyrean stage and was one of the top experts in the Bellinus family. He had extraordinary status. Hmm. Misunderstanding? I will personally be in charge of the fifth young lady's congratulatory gift. Furthermore, I will personally examine the items and determine if each and every one of them is true. You keep saying that the congratulatory gifts are false, but what is your intention? And you don't even know the difference between right and wrong. You want to kill the servant. Do you still have the family lord in your eyes? Junius's expression was cold. He didn't give Legia any face as he questioned her sternly. Legia had just said that the gift was fake without any proof. She wanted to kill the servant, but it was also a slap to Primus's face. Of course, during this period of time, he also had the intention of pleasing Camilla. Although he didn't know exactly what happened to Camilla's family, he was certain of one thing. At this moment, the strength of Camilla's family was far beyond the imagination of the Bellinus family. One must know that such a huge sum was enough to make most of the high-level masters blush with shame. The Bellinus family truly looked up to the high-level masters. Any one of them had the power to suppress their Bellinus clan. Third Elder, I... I... I didn't. Ligia's face turned pale. Junius's decision weighed heavily on her shoulders. Even if she was the family lord's daughter, she would have to bear the consequences. All right, Third Elder. Little Ligia was just being too impulsive. Don't make things difficult for her. Old Master Primus tried to smooth things over. After all, she was his daughter. Furthermore, he understood that Legia didn't really look down on him, her father. Legia, you too. Camilla is your younger sister. How can you doubt her? Apologize to your younger sister. Camilla, youngest sister, please forgive me. She felt extremely aggrieved in her heart, but at that moment, she had no choice but to lower her head. <laughs> oh, Lakia, this is not your best day. Camilla was in high spirits. She laughed wildly in her heart. All these years, she had been angered by Legia, and now her sister was getting her comeuppance. After a while, Camilla pretended to be generous and said, Humans are not saints. Who can be right? We are sisters. Let the past go. After all, she was her biological sister. Blood was thicker than water. It was fine to let her apologize and vent her resentment. Camilla didn't really want to take revenge and torture Legia to death. Furthermore, the old man was still there. She wanted to gain favor in his eyes. Curse you, little sister. So the little one got what she wanted. Just wait for me. I will not let it go just like that. Putting aside the fact that Legia swore in her heart, she would definitely make Camilla, this small person, look good in the future. Old Master Primus had already walked over like the wind and greeted Cepheus warmly. Son-in-law, we haven't seen each other for a long time. This time, no matter what, you have to stay at home for a period of time. Come, come. Cheers to you. 
the old man's voice carried a hint of flattery. The present was different from the past. Cepheus' achievements were far greater than those of the rest of the Bell and his family. He no longer needed to worry, though his in-laws did. If Cepheus, the son-in-law, held a grudge against them and refused to acknowledge them, the Bellinus family would suffer a huge loss. As he spoke, the old man fiercely glanced at his youngest son, Lucius. Looking at his indifferent attitude from the beginning to the end of the ceremony, it was obvious that he already knew Cepheus's family was no longer the same as before. Such an important piece of information. Yet he didn't think to tell his own father about it. Was this some sort of scam? As Cepheus looked at the old man who greeted him warmly, there was great joy in his heart. In the past ten years, the old man had never looked at him with a straight face. It was as if Cepheus owed him a large sum of money. Old man Primus, oh, you have finally come around today. He heaved a sigh of relief in his heart, but his hand movements were not slow. He hurriedly picked up the wine pot on the table and filled the old man's cup. Father-in-law, yes, we will stay for a while. This is Amadeus, right? I saw you back then. And you are still a young lad. It's been so many years since I last saw you. I can't even recognize you anymore. Ares, who was supposed to be the old man's target of appreciation, was thrown to the side by the old man. The young master of floating snow manure was not as important as his son-in-law and grandson. People were competitive, and it was even more so for the aristocratic families. If you have the ability, then bring out the same precious gifts. If you can't bring them out, then don't blindly compare them. Curses. How could this be? Ares' face was ashen. He had clenched his fist so tightly that veins were popping out of his forehead. I am the main character of this banquet. I am the center of this banquet. Episode 223, The Storm Rises Again. I'm afraid the situation in Sun City will really change this time. Of the four great clans of Sun City, the Bellinus clan and the Lucilus clan had been on good terms for generations. They were in-laws, and the Placidus and Dorso clans were on the same path. They had formed an alliance to fight against the Bellinus and Lucilus families. Both sides had swept away the others and now dominated Sun City. However, both sides had the same power, and no one had absolute confidence that they would be able to defeat the other side in one go. They could only suppress their ambitions and maintain a balance. Over the past few decades, Although there had been constant friction between the four great clans, a true war had never happened. However, after today, this balance would likely be broken. This birthday present was really too heavy. So heavy that it caused one's heart to tremble. A hundred marrow cleansing pills was enough to add a hundred quasi-grade-A bloodline experts to the Bellinus family 
or even a few true grade 8 bloodlines. As for the 10 tiger energy and blood pills, they could allow the Bellinus family to produce a few intermediate master warriors in a short period of time. One should know that both Primus and Junius had been stuck at the grade 3 crate perfection stage for many years. It was only because of the depletion of their energy and blood that they were unable to break through. Once their energy and blood were replenished, they would be able to return to their peak condition. They were very confident that they could break through the bottleneck in one go. In Sun City, a low-grade master was considered a top expert, but the intermediate master was the expert of the clan, and every single one of them had a pivotal position. The cold ice glass griffin sword was a high-grade treasure weapon and was great for killing opponents. Once it was completely refined, it was likely that no one in Sun City would be a match for the Bellinus family's patriarchs. The Hurricane Divine Sword Art wouldn't allow the Bellinus family to increase their strength in a short period of time. It wasn't easy to comprehend a supreme grade skill. Even those rank 7 bloodline peerless evildoers wouldn't be able to train a supreme grade skill to the mastery level in a year. It might take a few years or even a few decades. The final gift of blackberry fruit exceeded the imagination of all the party goers. It was a legendary spirit fruit. Even one berry would be enough to increase the spirit energy of a grade 5 master to the bone forging 7th layer in a short period of time. Once a high level master appeared in the Bellinus family, he alone would be enough to suppress both the Placidus and Dorsal clans. Though many high-level master warriors might not be able to part with it, Camilla's family could easily give this gift away. One could imagine how terrifying that was for the other family members. When had Camilla's family become so powerful? All these years, the relationship between her family and the rest of the Bellinus clan had ossified. However, blood was thicker than water and familial love wasn't something that could be abandoned just like that. If their kindness were to be severed, they wouldn't have given such a huge gift. The banquet continued, but the atmosphere had become much heavier. Many people were thinking about how to deal with the Bellinus family, which was about to soar into the sky. Sun City was only so big, and with the rise of a major power, there would be a lot of bloodshed. Suddenly, the noisy hall became silent, and three people strode in from the outside. The person in the lead was a muscular man in his 40s. He had a rough face and had been born with a powerful energy. It was as if he could control everything at any moment. Every step he took was like a heavy hammer pounding on the hearts of everyone present, making them feel as if they couldn't breathe. Behind this robust middle-aged man were two young men in their 20s. The man on the left looked to be in his early 20s. He wore a purple tunic and had an oppressive air of nobility. Combined with his angular, handsome face, he was the ideal Prince Charming in the hearts of countless girls in Sun City. However, there was almost no color to his face, as if he had just recovered from a serious illness. The last person wasn't very old, maybe 28 or 29 years, but his eyes seemed to contain the meaning of time itself. He had a desolate and ancient feeling about him, and his body looked gentle and refined. However, his temperament was extraordinary. Occasionally, 
he would release a trace of energy that gave people the feeling that he was a god who had descended to the mortal world. It made people want to prostrate themselves on the ground and worship him. Huh? Why is he here? When he saw the scholarly young man, a trace of surprise flashed through Amadeus' eyes. This youth was familiar to him, Alerio Getha. He was the third disciple of the Nine Masters of Cyprus. He was reputed to be a great warrior, and he was ranked 17th on the Earth Board. What's more, he was one of the expert warriors Amadeus had saved in the Azor Griffin Mountain Range. Right at that moment, Old Master Primus had already laughed out loud and went forward to welcome him. Ketha, you are late. You must drink three cups of wine as punishment. Laris Getha was the castellan of Sun City. The Getha family was a foreign force, so they were far from being as deeply rooted as the Bellinus, Lucilus, Placidus, and Dorsus families. However, their strength couldn't be underestimated, especially after the rise of the peerless evildoer, Alerio. The Getha family had the potential to fight against the four families. Vaguely, a trace of doubt emerged in Old Master Primus's heart. Perhaps they were here to celebrate the birthday of this old man. But half of the birthday banquet had passed by now, and it would only be a matter of time before it came to an end. Their presence didn't seem to be sincere. Moreover, judging from Laris's aggressive manner, it seemed like he was here to denounce the old man. Old man? The wine isn't urgent. Before this, please give me an explanation. Laris's voice faintly revealed a trace of indescribable resentment. This really isn't friendly. Old Master Primus's heart slightly froze, but his mouth faintly smiled as he said, Getha, if my Bellinus family has offended you in any way, please forgive us. On this joyous day, Old Master Primus didn't want to cause any unhappiness. Old man, it's not that I don't want to give you face. It's just that Claudia has gone too far this time. If it wasn't for my son's timely return, my family's gladiators might have no descendants. Lara's voice was filled with endless anger, like a volcano that was about to erupt. He only had two sons and had always regarded them as the most important people in his heart. In the end... His youngest son was kicked to the point that his lower body was severely injured. If not for Alerio delivering the healing holy herb, a hundred spirits body recovery pill, in time, his youngest son's life wouldn't have been saved. What? When old Master Primus heard this, he was immediately shocked. A trace of worry unknowingly climbed onto his face. Everyone in Sun City knew that Laris was someone who protected his own people the most. And his most important people were his sons. In the next moment, Old Master Primus's gaze landed on a young girl who looked to be 17 or 18 years old. She wore a fiery red stola and looked like a passionate flame. She was just over five feet tall and petite. However, with her height paired with her small, oval face, she looked so charming, like a nymph in the forest. Claudia Bellinus, the daughter of the Bellinus family's third brother, was famous in Sun City for having a fiery temper. Claudia... What's going on? Old Master Primus's voice was heavy. If this matter wasn't handled properly, Laris, 
this crazy man who protected his own people wouldn't let this matter go so easily. Grandfather, this matter isn't my fault. It was that Flavian wanted to do something bad to Rosalia. That's why I kicked him. Claudia said with a wronged expression. At that moment, a beautiful girl beside Claudia stood up. She was wearing white clothes and looked to be 18 years old. Her skin was as white as snow. Her eyebrows were as beautiful as a painting, and her entire body emitted a weak energy. When people saw her, they couldn't help but feel pity for her. Rosalia was the daughter of the second master of the Lucilis family, Georges. She had a weak personality. She was completely on the opposite side of Claudia, the little hot pepper. However, what was strange was that out of all the third generation disciples in the Bellinus and Lucilis families, they had the best relationship. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that they were inseparable. Grandpa, don't blame Claudia for this matter. If it wasn't for Claudia arriving in time, my innocence would have been threatened. I would have been destroyed by that villain's hand. Rosalia's voice became softer and softer as she spoke. Beast. Countless guests in the surroundings secretly spat. No one doubted Rosalia's words. What kind of character did the second young master of the Getha family have? It wasn't as if everyone in the crowd didn't know that they were the tyrants of Sun City. They burned, killed, robbed, and committed all kinds of evil deeds. Their reputation might have been a little exaggerated, but they have done a lot of things to bully men and women. A burly man not far from Rosalia knocked on the table violently. He suddenly stood up and glared at Laris. Laris, this is how you teach your son? If you don't give me an explanation today, we, the Lucilis family, will never join with the Getha family. This person was none other than Rosalia's father, the second master of the Lucilis family, Georges. At this moment, he was so angry that he even had the heart to eat people. This little brute had actually dared to do such a thing to his precious daughter? Did he really think that Georges wouldn't kill him when he found out? This jerk really deserves to die. How dare you have designs on Rosalia? Do you really think that there is no one else in Lucilla's family? Laris, you have to give us an explanation right now. The disciples of the Lucilis family in the vicinity were filled with angry emotions. They couldn't tolerate this. Otherwise, how could the Lucilis family establish a foothold in Sun City? They wouldn't get any respect in the future. A hint of uneasiness flashed across Laris's eyes when he heard that. Speaking of which, his son was the one who had done wrong. If it were him... If someone dared to do something bad to his daughter, it wouldn't be a light punishment. However, when he thought about how he had almost lost his son, in an instant, that trace of embarrassment was instantly destroyed by his raging anger. She almost made us lose our hair. Do you really think that the Getha family is easy to bully? today. If you don't give me a satisfactory answer, I'm not finished with you.
episode 224. There's a place for you to talk. The great birthday feast had been an exciting event so far, full of twists and turns. At this point, the atmosphere in the huge banquet hall was extremely tense. It seemed like a battle could break out at any moment. As expected of the number one butcher in Sun City, he is really unreasonable. Just based on what the evil creature did, I'm surprised they didn't kill him on the spot. Everyone considered that luck. But this Lara still had the nerve to come and find him. His skin is probably three feet thicker than a city wall. One guest was overheard whispering to another. Contempt flashed across the eyes of many of the guests in the hall. They would definitely not have had the nerve to come and denounce the Bellinus family. However, their words were not spoken loudly. Loris wasn't someone to be trifled with. Although the Getha family wasn't as properous as the four great families, Loris was the city lord of Sun City, appointed by the Imperial Court. He represented the face of the Great Roman Empire, even the four major families. Furthermore, Loris wasn't a mediocre person. He had the training base of a fourth level master and a secret skill passed down in his family, the Fire Spirit True Technique. Even an ordinary Fifth Empyrean expert wouldn't be a match for him. He was one of the top experts in Sun City, and it could be said that other than the old clan suppressing patriarchs from the four big families, almost no one was his match. Of course, during this period of time, there were also a few who were gloating over the misfortune of others, such as the disciples of the Placidus and Dorso families. They were even more eager for both sides to start fighting directly. And with Camilla's family's domineering rise, the Bellinus family had already faintly gained the upper hand over all of the other families and had the power to dominate Sun City alone. This was definitely not something the Placidus and Dorsus family wanted to see. If they had a falling out with the Getha family at this moment, it would be great if a full-scale war was waged. The Getha clan was naturally not a match for the Bellinus clan and the Lucilus clan. However, the Getha clan had a powerful background, not to mention official status. Just the number one person in the younger generation of the Gatha family, Alerio, was enough to scare many warriors. He was one of the top 17 people from the Mithraea Warrior Sect's Earthboard and had the status in the Mithraea Warrior Sect. Even if he wasn't as strong as some sect elder, he was close. Alerio wasn't someone as an ordinary big family could afford to offend. If both parties really started a war, it was hard to say who would win or lose, even if the Bellinus family was now considered the strongest. It still might not be enough to crush the Getha family, and in the end, it could be very well be a lose-lose situation. Loris, you are going too far. Georges was so angry that he was about to explode. His eyes were bloodshot, like those of an enraged tiger. Not only did that beast almost tarnish his precious daughter, but he also wanted them to give him an explanation. Did he really think that the Lucilus family was made of mud and could be freely stomped on by the Gaitha? Laris, don't overdo it. Don't go too far. Old Master Primus said with a cold expression, a trace of anger flashed in his eyes. The Bellinus and Lucilus families had been good friends for generations. They were in-laws. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that they were like the same family. In fact, old man Lucilus' wife was Primus' young sister, and Rosalia was his granddaughter. Primus, the Bellinus family almost killed my son. You understand that, right? Loris said. I'll put it this way. 
if the two of you don't give it to me, I'll give it to you. One. Fight! Hurry and fight! The hearts of the Placidus and Dorso clan burned with incomparable passion, and they wished for nothing more than both of their adversaries to fight each other to the death. Right at that moment, Alerio, who was quietly standing behind Loris, suddenly took a step forward and interrupted Loris's words. Father, let me handle Flavian's matter. It's Alerio. I didn't expect him to be here too. Many guests were shocked. The people who had been focusing on Loris didn't notice Alerio, who was behind Loris. Don't bother with them, Loris muttered unhappily, but he still took a step back. Regarding Galerio, who was the pride of his life, Loris believed in him. Greetings to the old man and everyone else. Galerio didn't attack directly and bowed to old master Primus. This young man is too polite. Old master Primus hurriedly returned the bow. His voice faintly revealed a trace of fear. This was the number one monster in Sun City, one of the top 17 people from the Mithraea Warrior Sect Earthboard. His status was respected, and his future achievements were far beyond everyone's imagination. Old man, this matter is indeed Flavian's fault. If you've made a mistake, you have to fix it. Flavian, why don't you come over and apologize to Miss Rosalia? Brother, I... Flavian had almost become a eunuch, but he still had to apologize. How could he be willing to accept this? Apologize. Illyrio's face turned serious, and his voice was cold. He unwillingly came in front of Rosalia and muttered in a low voice, Yes, yes, yes. I apologize, I apologize. In the entire Getha family, the person Flavian feared the most was his older brother. It seems like the Getha family still has a reasonable person. The anger in old Master Primus's heart faded slightly, and he was about to step down the stairs and put this matter aside. After all, the Getha family wasn't someone to be trifled with. If a war broke out, it was very likely that both sides would suffer heavy losses. However, the Getha family was the one that would suffer the real loss in the matter. Right at that moment, Alerio suddenly changed the topic and said, Although Flavian was the one who was at fault in this matter, Miss Claudia should have just taught him a lesson. She shouldn't have attacked him so ruthlessly. If I didn't happen to have a hundred spirit body recovery pills, I wouldn't have been able to help him. And now that I've used them to save Flavium, I will no longer be able to help others in the future. It isn't good to let this matter go just like that. As Laris seed, Alerio had also inherited Laris's protective personality. Even though he knew that this was Flavian's fault, he still wanted to stand up for him. The apology he had given was just a courtesy before a soldier. It's not over yet. The eyes of the guests who thought that the good show would end here lit up again. I knew my brother loved me the most. The disappointment in Flavian's heart was immediately swept away. Flavium, what are you going to do? The anger that he had suppressed with great difficulty once again boiled in Georges's heart. This matter was caused by Miss Rosalia, and the one who injured Flavian was Miss Claudia. The two of them could be said to have responsibilities that cannot be shirked. This matter will come to an end as long as both of them are willing to marry him. Hilario's voice was incomparably calm. It was as if he was talking about a trivial matter, but everyone was shocked. It was like a sudden clap of thunder, causing them to be unable to come back to their senses for a long time.
They kept cursing in their hearts. To think that he would actually ask the Bellinus and Lucillus family's young ladies to marry Flavian, this useless playboy. Thanks, old brother. You really are looking out for me. Flavian, who was standing to the side, had a look of delight on his face. Happiness had come so suddenly. Claudia and Rosalia were two of the four golden flowers in Sun City. They were the goddesses in the hearts of countless young elites. For an ordinary person to be able to marry one of them was already a blessing. And with his terrible reputation in the past, well, there was no need to talk about it. There wasn't even a crack in the window. Otherwise, he wouldn't have used such a risky move, directly using force. Alario, how dare you? Georges was so angry that smoke was coming out of his ears and his killing intent was rolling. His tiger eyes kept flickering. The other disciples of the Bellinus and Lucillus families were also glaring at Alario angrily. This was going too far. He had really gone too far. Cousin, this Alario is really detestable. You must teach him a good lesson. Nydia said angrily to Amadeus, revealing her canine teeth and waving her little hands. This Alario is really going too far. Amadeus frowned as he agreed, and a trace of disgust flashed across his eyes. He regretted saving him in the demon spirit secret realm. Alario was right to protect his own people, but Amadeus was also very protective of his friends and family. Alario would regret coming here. No matter how protective you were of your friends and family, you couldn't be so insensible. If Amadeus had such a brother, he wouldn't just refuse to defend him. He might even punish him himself. However, before Amadeus could make a move, someone jumped out of the crowd. This man was none other than the young master of Floating Snow Mountain Manor, Ares. How could he be willing to let Amadeus and his family lose face? He, Ares, was the center of attention, one of the hosts of the banquet. Furthermore, he was the perfect hero, always saving the damsel in distress. Ariel's fiance, Petro Nilla, was good looking, but in terms of appearance, Claudia and Rosalia completely outclassed her. How could he watch such beauties be ravaged by that scum Flavian? Alario, this isn't right. Everything your brother suffered today was purely his own fault. You can't blame others when he's forced himself on a woman like this. How can we let this go? Looking at the calm Ares who was about to turn the tide, Lakia's originally gloomy mood disappeared all of a sudden. A hint of complacency climbed onto her pretty face once again. She glanced at Camilla provocatively, as if to say, So what if your family has a fortune of 10,000? At this critical moment, you still have to look at my future son-in-law. Petronilla, on the other hand, raised her head high, as if she was deeply afraid that the others wouldn't know that Ares was her man. Who are you? What right do you have to speak up?
Episode 225 The Horrifying Galerio Ares had an idea. He would rely on his own strength. He wanted to turn the tide and the war into a deal. In this way, he would save face for his family. He would also leave a good impression in the hearts of the two most beautiful women in the city. He might even be able to carry the beauties back home with him. It was truly a beautiful thing to kill two birds with one stone. Unfortunately, reality was so cruel. Alerio didn't even look at Ares. The ant wasn't even at the bone forging stage. Why would he even speak up? You. You. The smile on Ares' face instantly froze, and his chest heaved up and down like a drum. He didn't know when, but he clenched his fists tightly. He, Ares, was the young master of the floating snow manure. When had he ever suffered such humiliation? This was a stain on his life that he couldn't bear to put up with. He wanted to make a move, but his remaining rationality told him that if he made a move now, the one who would be at a disadvantage would be himself. He had also heard about Alerio, the number one monster in Sun City. It was said that he had already condensed the spirit bones a few years ago and stepped into the bone forging stage. Ares was far from being his match. He must not know my identity. That must be it. After comforting himself, Ares forcefully suppressed the anger in his heart. A smile appeared on his face once again, and he looked elegant and graceful. He said, Illyrio, it's my fault. I didn't reveal my identity. I'm Ares Centimalis of the Floating Snow Mountain Menor, and my father is Vesper Centimalis. Although the young lady of the Bellinus family attacked Flavian severely, it was your younger brother who offended her first. As the saying goes, it's better to resolve fights with enemies than to settle them. Alerio, please show some respect. Let go of the conflict and turn it into a peace treaty. The Floating Snow Menor was the number one sword sect in Koza, and there were countless experts in the Menor, including several intermediate master experts. Ares' father had even taken that step before the new year. He had stepped into the high level master, and as a famous sword trainer, his attack power was known throughout the world. His father's actual combat strength was comparable to that of a level 8 warrior. Even some elders of the Mithraea warrior sect had to give his father some face. Although Ares had heard that Illyrio was ranked 17th among the monsters, he didn't believe it. How dare he not give respect to the floating snow Menor and his father, the great swordsman Vesper. Looking at the chit-chatting Ares, who had the demeanor of a noble family. Ligia and her daughter straightened their backs. They were like two hands that had won a battle, especially Petronilla, who suddenly found Ares more attractive than ever. But very quickly, reality gave Ares a fierce slap. Who do you think you are to challenge me? Get lost. Illyria looked like a modest gentleman and a scholarly man, but deep in his bones, he was just like his father. He had an arrogant heart, and what was this floating snow manure? It was only because it was somewhat famous in the Koza region that it was placed in the 36 paths of the Roman Great Empire. It was unknown whether or not it would be able to enter the ranks of the 500 major powers. There was no comparison between it and the Mithraea warrior sect. Alerio was a warrior of the Disciple of the Nine Master and had the strength to annihilate the entire floating snow manure. 
no one knew where this kid got his confidence from. Yet he dared to stand up in front of everyone and slap Ilario's face. Despicable fool. You actually dare to look down on me like this? Ares' face suddenly stiffened, and blue veins popped out of his forehead. He had never thought that Ilario would dare to not give him respect after he had introduced himself. This was a direct slap to Ares' face, and it was a rough one. Ares wanted to explode. However, when he thought about Ilario's background, the killing intent in his heart froze. The Mithraea warrior sect was a huge power that the floating snow manure couldn't afford to offend. Just like that, he retreated with his tail between his legs. He was extremely unwilling to accept it. Suddenly, a thought flashed through Ares' mind. He thought of someone and said in a calm tone, Alerio, your Macedonian Academy's Tertius Forianus and I are best friends. I wonder if you can give Tertius some respect. Although Tertius's ranking wasn't as good as Alerio's, it wasn't much different. He was also a top-level Heaven's Pride warrior of the Disciple of the Nine Master of the Mithraea Warrior Sect. He didn't believe that Alerio wouldn't give him face. He didn't believe that he wouldn't give Tertius face. Unfortunately, he had the wrong idea. Within the Mithraea Warrior Sect, the Cyprus Academy wasn't on good terms with the Macedonian Academy. In recent years, the Macedonian Academy had risen to power. The Cyprus Academy had been angered by the Macedonian Academy many times. However, the most important thing was that young Master Tertius had already died in the Demon Spirit Secret Realm. Before Ares could finish his words, Alerio sneered. Using a dead man to pressure me? You really don't know what to do. You. 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 What do you mean by that? Ares' face turned pale, and a trace of uneasiness appeared in his heart. Hmm. As Tertius' best friend, don't you know that he has already fallen into the demon spirit secret realm? A deep disdain flashed in Ilario's eyes, especially when he said the words, best friend. Obviously, he didn't believe that Ares was Tertius' best friend. It was more likely that he didn't know Tertius. Tertius had always been arrogant. How could he take a fancy to an ant that wasn't even a master? This. This. How is this possible? How is this possible? Ares' body trembled. His voice was filled with deep disbelief. Tertius's might, he had witnessed it with his own eyes. One man and one sword. He had swept across the Nine Griffin village and killed the Nine Chiefs. His strength was known throughout the entire floating snow manure. Only his father, the Snow Griffin swordsman, Vesper, was his equal. As for the others, such an expert. How could he have died so easily? It hadn't been easy for Ares to get the attention of Petronilla, such a beautiful woman as she was. In the past few months, he had been busy flattering her and her family. How could he pay attention to other trivial matters? Like what was going on in the demon spirit secret realm? Although the news of the four great sects losing many top gladiators in the demon spirit secret realm had spread like wildfire in the western region, he was still ignorant of it. At that moment, move to the side. If you dare to be noisy again, I'll cripple you. A trace of impatience flashed in Alerio's eyes. He didn't have that much time to waste with such an ant. You. Ares' eyes were red, and his heart was burning with anger. 
He had never been reprimanded like this in his life. However, when he saw Lario's cold and emotionless eyes, he immediately trembled. Not good. This jerk is serious. In an instant, the anger in his heart disappeared like a tide. The next moment, Ares no longer cared about getting respect and quickly retreated. Being humiliated was better than losing his life. Uh, why? How could this be? How could this be? Ligia and her daughter were in disbelief. Her daughter's fiancé, her future son-in-law, was supposed to turn the tides and suppress that arrogant Alerio. How did things turn out like this? Old man and everyone from the Lucilis family, what do you think about this proposal? Alerio took a step forward and asked. Alerio, how dare you? Alerio, you are courting death. You're going too far. You are really going too far. The disciples of the Bellinus and Lucilis families, including old Master Primus, were all fuming with rage and gritting their teeth. Flavian had almost sullied their young lady. In requesting that their young ladies marry his perverted younger brother, Alerio was simply shameless to the extreme. No matter how good-tempered a person was, he would still be furious. Let's go to war. Get the family. The Lucellus family will not rest until you die. And the Bellinus family. Today, we will fight together. Many of the disciples from the two families said that they would fight to the death against the Getha family. Their scion Ilario was going too far. If they just let this matter go, how would the two families stand proudly in Sun City? All of them would just need to find a rope and hang themselves with it to save them the shame of being mocked by the people of Sun City. At that moment, all the guests in the hall felt an extremely powerful spirit energy surge out from Alerio's body, instantly enveloping the entire hall. <laughs> this... How is this possible? How is this possible? How can this Illyrio be so strong? How can he be so strong? Countless gladiators were horrified. Under the terrifying pressure of the energy, even a grade three huge perfection master like Primus would be shocked. To Illyrio, ordinary gladiators were like ants on the ground. If he wished, he could crush them at any time. They could be erased from this world. High-level master. This Alerio is definitely a high-level master. And among all the high-level masters, he is definitely not a weakling. Recall that the three-eyed old devil had forcefully changed the rules of the demon spirit secret realm causing the dangers in the secret realm to increase tenfold, or even a hundred times. However, as the saying goes, danger often coexisted with opportunities. As long as one could leave the demon spirit secret realm alive, the harvest would be far beyond the imagination of the world, and it wasn't something that could be compared to the spoils gained in the previous year. In just a month's time, Alerio's training base had jumped by three levels. He had broken through to the level six master stage in one go. His actual combat strength was even greater than that of some of the young giants. Even if he faced an ordinary Nine Heavens expert, he would still have the strength to win. This was the reason why he dared to pressure the Bellinus and Lucilis families. Old man, either you want to become in-laws with the Getha family, or you insist 
on becoming enemies with the Getha family. Which is it? Episode 226, then cut it off. The demon spirit secret realm was a dangerous place, but it was also a heaven-defying opportunity. After digesting nearly half of the fortune he'd gained there, Alerio's training base had jumped by three grades. He'd moved from a peak grade 3 master to a level 6 early stage master, and his actual combat strength was even more astonishing. He had completely crushed the level 7 and level 8 masters of the major tribes. From just the pressures of his energy alone, countless gladiators in the hall couldn't even form a single resistance thought. This was the difference in their level of skill. Even if all of them attacked together, even if they used all of their trump cards, they would still be no match for Ilario. Curses. This little brute is going too far. He's going too far. Old Master Primus's eyes were bloodshot. He was like an enraged beast that wanted to eat someone. If they agreed to this marriage arrangement, their reputation would be ruined they would become the laughing stock of Sun City. Just as he was about to reject the offer, he swallowed his words. This Alario was really too strong. He was so strong that Primus couldn't even muster the courage to resist, even if the patriarchs of the two families were here. Even if he used all of his resources, it would still be difficult for him to escape Alerio's suppression. If they fought, there was a high chance that it would be the Bellinus and Lucillus families who would be defeated in the end. Claudia and Rosalia don't deserve this. But what can I do? He was in a dilemma. The family's inheritance was at risk. He couldn't be selfish. Because of his granddaughter, the family's hundred years of inheritance was about to be destroyed. In an instant, old Master Primus seemed to have aged more than ten years. Watching his granddaughter being bullied by this evil thief devastated him. But he couldn't do anything about it. This was definitely the greatest strategy of his lifetime. When she saw old Master Primus's apologetic look, Claudia, who had always been mischievous, immediately understood what her grandfather meant to do. She fell to the ground in despair. Her eyes were unfocused, and she looked like a zombie. No, even if I have to die... I will never marry that scum. Her grief was greater than her heart could bear. Everyone in Sun City knew that among all the useless young masters, he was the second. No one would dare to be the first. The scumbag among scumbags. Zyther, chess, painting, literature, and gladiator arts. He wasn't good at a single one of these. He was, however, proficient in the art of eating, drinking, buying, and gambling. Cheating and swindling, those were things he could do with ease. If he didn't rob a civilian girl every now and then, then he wouldn't be Flavian. It wasn't a joke. She would rather die than marry such a hedonistic scumbag. At the same time, 
she felt regret in her heart. If she had known this would happen, she wouldn't have held back at all. She would have just sent this beast on her way. Even if she died, she would have died in peace. Old man, have you thought about it? Alerio looked down at old master Primus from above. His expression was indescribably calm. He believed that the old man would make a wise decision. As a disciple of a big family himself, how could Alerio not know that what old masters valued the most was the inheritance of the clan? For the sake of their clan, there was nothing that they couldn't sacrifice. Two granddaughters was nothing for the sake of the clan. This... Although he had already decided to let Claudia and Rosalina down and the words were on the tip of his tongue, no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't say it out loud. These were his biological granddaughters. How could he give up just like that? If that Flavian had any potential, maybe it wouldn't be such a big deal. But he really was a useless jerk. If Primus allowed the two girls to marry him, it would truly be pushing them into a pit of fire. <sighs> Rosalia, Claudia, the two of you are going to be mine soon. Flavian thought, when the time comes, I will let you know how powerful I am. Especially you, Claudia, who actually dare to do such a thing to me. Watch how I deal with you. He leered, and his pale face was illuminated by a hideous inner light. Old man, give me a quick answer. Do you want to marry into the Getha family? Or do you insist on becoming enemies with us? Alerio urged once again, his voice filled with impatience. Claudia, Rosalina, please don't blame me. Primus sighed helplessly. In the end, the idea of the family inheritance defeated any trace of familial love in his heart. At that moment, Alerio, enough. A voice filled with anger was heard from behind old Master Primus. In an instant, the gazes of all the guests in the hall were attracted by it. Who is this kid? How dare he scold Delario? It. It seems to be Camilla's son. Is he stupid? How dare he talk to Delario like that? Crazy. That kid must be crazy. The guests looked at Amadeus, who had suddenly stood up, as if they were looking at a madman. No one thought highly of Amadeus. Camilla's family was definitely not the same as before. Their attacks were so heavy that even many high-level master warriors were shocked. However, that didn't mean that they were qualified to fight Delario. Alerio was a terrifying warrior who could suppress them with his energy alone. He was so powerful that even many high-level master warriors were no match for him. As for Amadeus, he was just a 15 or 16-year-old man. Whether he had the training base of a pulse opening stage 9 heavens warrior was still unknown. Alerio could easily crush him with just a finger he would make him die without a burial ground. Kid, you've got guts. It's a pity that you're a little stupid. Ares, who had retreated to the side, had a gloating look in his eyes. He looked at Amadeus as if he was looking at a dead man. The sulky feeling in his heart immediately disappeared. Nonsense. What nonsense? 
old Master Primus' expression changed. Is this a matter that a kid like you can interfere in? Just like all the guests, he didn't think highly of Amadeus, this grandson of his. If it wasn't for the fact that the Pulcher family was no longer the same as before, Primus would have stopped Amadeus' interference immediately. Right at that moment. Where did this wild brat come from? Is there a place for you to speak here? Seeing his older brother descending from the heavens like a god, suppressing the Bellinus and Lucilus families until they couldn't even raise their heads, Flavian's arrogant and domineering nature was revived once again. He said arrogantly to Amadeus, Why aren't you giving us respect? Get lost. Before he could finish his words, Flavian's entire body had already been sent flying. What shocked everyone even more was that the person who had attacked was actually the mighty and insufferably arrogant Delirio. This. This. What is this? What is going on? Flavian felt deep confusion. From the left side of his face, which was swollen already, it could be seen that Alerio meant business. Why did you hit me? Flavian struggled to get up from the ground. He had a dumbfounded look on his face, and his voice was filled with unspeakable grievance. What is going on? Loris who had been quietly watching his eldest son perform, also looked at Alerio in confusion. However, Alerio didn't seem to have heard Flavian's reproach at all. His body trembled. He carefully walked toward Amadeus. He looked like a mouse seeing a cat, like a primary school student who had made a mistake and was currently being caught by his teacher. He felt indescribably uneasy. There was no longer an insufferably arrogant and imposing manner from before. It was as if he was a completely different person. This... What in the world is going on? Loris couldn't figure it out. It made no sense. At that moment... Alerio finally arrived in front of Amadeus. I'm meeting Amadeus. His voice was filled with indescribable panic. This young man is actually above Alerio in training? How is this possible? Countless guests stared with wide eyes, their faces filled with disbelief. With Alerio's training base and strength, even among the disciple of the Nine Master Warriors of the Mithraea Warriors sect. Apart from those peerless warriors from the Sky Ranking, how many people could be worthy of such a title and rank? How could this young man in front of him be a monster of the Sky Ranking? Everyone knew that the youngest expert in the Mithraea Warriors sect's 36 heavenly rankings was over 30 years old. Not to mention, even if it was a monster from the Sky Ranking, it was still impossible for Alerio to be so shaken. It was as if he had seen the legendary prehistoric Berserk Beast. Suddenly, an exclamation attracted everyone's attention. It's him! It's Amadeus. He's the youngest mortal board first in the history of the Mithraea warrior sect. Finally, someone had recognized Amadeus's identity. Even in a small family like the Pulcher family, many of them had joined the Mithraea warrior sect, let alone a large family like the Bellinus family.
and the Lucillus family. In the main hall, there were many disciples of the Mithraea warrior sect. There were even a few disciples of the disciple of the nine master warriors among them. But they were not as dazzling as Alerio, who was ranked 17th on the earth board. Although some people initially felt that Amadeus was familiar, as if they had seen him somewhere before, when the Pulcher family arrived in Sun City, none of them had thought that he was the youngest disciple of the Mithraea warrior sect, the mortal board first, the number one gladiator. As far as they knew, Amadeus, their youngest cousin, was a nobody with a low-grade rank 9 bloodline. Besides, the news of his death in the demon spirit secret realm had spread like wildfire. In everyone's eyes, Amadeus was already a dead man. He... He is the youngest mortal board first in the Mithraea warrior sect. Amadeus? Didn't they say that he died prematurely in the demon spirit secret realm? And even if he really is that Amadeus, this Alerio shouldn't be so panicked. Very quickly, a great deal of doubt climbed into the hearts of all the guests in the hall. They could all say that Amadeus' great name had been passed down from the heavens. He had rebelled against the peerless evildoer's Saturnus Livia at the mere age of fifteen. He had become the youngest person in the history of the Mithraea warrior sect to earn mortal board first. It was rumored that his talent was extremely high. He was comparable to a founding patriarch of the Mithraea warrior sect. Or perhaps even better, he had the title of the number one monster in the Mithraea warrior sect. It was undeniable. His talent was far above Alerio's, but his potential was still his potential. Before he transformed into his true strength, everything was just an illusion. No matter how much Alerio was afraid of Amadeus, he shouldn't have acted so terrified. What? My grandson is actually the number one monster in the Mithraea warrior sect? Old Master Primus sucked in a breath of cold air. At the same time, a flash of understanding appeared in his heart. No wonder Camilla was able to bring out such a heavy gift. It's all because of young Amadeus. How could this be? How could this be? How could that wild brat be the number one monster in the Mithraea warrior sect? Ares' face twisted into a ball. His eyes were filled with envy, jealousy, and hatred. Alerio, you're good. You're really good. Amadeus' voice was extremely cold. It made people shiver from the bottom of their souls. Although he didn't like the Bellinus family very much, no matter what, Amadeus couldn't deny that there was a part of the Bellinus family's bloodline flowing in his body. Alerio had forced the Bellinus and Lucilla's families to bully Claudia and Rosalia. It was undoubtedly a direct slap to Amadeus's face. Calm down, Amadeus. Calm down. I didn't mean to offend you. 
Beads of sweat kept dripping down Alirio's forehead. His voice carried a hint of sobbing. But at the same time, there was also a hint of resentment mixed in. Since you have been here all this time, you have heard everything. I made a mistake. I don't want to cause any trouble for the Bellinus and Lucilus families. Is this really true? Is Alario really saying this? The guests in the hall were flabbergasted. They felt as if they had fallen into a dream. All of this was too surreal. What do you think should be done about this matter? Amadeus still had a cold expression on his face. Alario hurried to say, Amadeus, this is written in books. If you want to fight or punish me, I will not complain. You will both personally apologize to my two cousins and get their forgiveness. Then, you will pay the Bellinus and Lucinus families a million spirit stones each. Let's forget about what happened just now. Amadeus said in a low voice. After all, this Illyrio was a disciple of the Mithraea warrior sect. And he was from the same sect as him. Furthermore, they'd had some friendly relations in the demon spirit secret realm. Most importantly, his attitude of admitting his mistake wasn't bad. And Amadeus didn't want to go too far with it. What? Apologizing and paying millions of spirit stones? He really dares to say that? The entire hall was once again filled with utter shock. That was a total of two million spirit stones. It wasn't 20,000. Nor was it 200,000. Even if the four great clans joined forces, they probably wouldn't be able to produce so many spirit stones. However, these words sounded like amnesty in Ilario's ears. He was deeply afraid that Amadeus would go back on his word. So he kept nodding in agreement. Yes, 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 Amadeus. I will apologize and compensate now. I will apologize and compensate now. Two million spirit stones. Although it was painful for him, as long as he could obtain Amadeus's forgiveness, it was worth it. As for you, Flavian, since you can't control yourself, then cut it off, so as to avoid harming others. <laughs> <laughs>